Welcome to the Awaken on Purpose podcast, where each week you'll hear inspirational stories of heart-centered leaders who have awakened to their higher purpose and taken that leap of faith to follow their heart and make an impact in the world. Get ready to be enlightened, empowered, and transformed with your host, Jennifer Spohr. really super excited and overjoyed to connect with Carol Campos and Deb Sorensen today on our show. They are the creators of The Divine Breadcrumb, an online community and podcast. Carol and Deb define a divine breadcrumb as a stepping stone, a clue or a sign from the universe which helps you on the next leg of your journey. The show focuses on the most pivotal moments in people's lives, which then cause them to move in an entirely new direction. Deb and Carol hope that by showcasing the stories of these heart-centered people, it may trigger ideas and even courage for others to follow their own unique path. Carol and Deb have over 50 years of business experience, Carol working in corporate America and Deb working predominantly as a successful entrepreneur. As best friends for over 20 years, they always knew they wanted to somehow combine their skill sets and work together. Aside from the divine breadcrumb, Carol is a life coach helping people to find their own authentic path through traditional and intuitive coaching methods. Deb works in tech, providing training and web application solutions for her clients. Welcome, ladies. I'm just really beyond overjoyed to have you. Oh, we're so happy to be here. And yeah, that was quite a mouthful having to do both of us at the same time. <laughs> hey, I got it out there. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Thanks very much for having us. This is fun. Yes, I agree. And, and this is not the first time we've connected. So for our listeners out there, I have interviewed on Deb and Carol's show previously. And so it is just, it's an exceptional joy to be able to connect with both of you again today. Thanks. So we would love to know beyond what I just shared in the bio, what, what really inspired both of you to start the divine breadcrumb? Because you could have chosen a million different ways to collaborate, right? On sharing a message. Why this one? Oh boy. Deb, do you want me to start? Yeah. Yeah. You started it so you could start. (laughs) Okay. Well, and I think Jennifer, when you say inspired, that's really the key word because what I'm doing now is something that I couldn't have imagined even three years ago and the divine breadcrumb and my coaching practice, it just wasn't even a glint in my eye. Um, But I think when I decided to leave corporate and I gave myself the gift of time to go within and do some personal development work and, you know, kind of get quiet, that's when the inspired ideas were able to flow through. And, you know, because prior to that, my thoughts were like a hamster on a wheel. And I think I was about two months, maybe three months out of corporate and I had hired a coach and I was just exercising one day and I got what I describe as a, just this download of information to start an online community showcasing people around the world doing great things. And it was kind of like, where the heck did this come from? You know, this didn't come from me. This came through me, but, but I got really excited about it. And, you know, of course I go over to Deb's house and you know, I'm telling her about it and, and she got excited about it. And, you know, for years we had wanted to do something together, but we never could find that, you know, quote unquote thing to do. And I think this was the thing that resonated with both of us. And, you know, then we decided to do a podcast, even though neither one of us knew anything about podcasting. And it just grew from there. Yeah. Carol had been using the term, the divine breadcrumb prior to getting the download. So the download in and of itself was labeled a divine breadcrumb. (laughs) <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, when it came time to naming it, that just was the most appropriate name that we could come up with. 
And sort of every step of the way has been a divine breadcrumb. I mean, the podcast thing, as Carol said, neither of us, I hadn't even listened to one at that point. <laughs> and neither one of us will take credit or blame, as the case may be, for coming up with the idea of doing the podcast. But literally two days after we discussed it, my wife got an email in her inbox and it was this free week-long podcast training boot camp, nine to five, Monday through Friday, free. And I mean, that was such a huge divine breadcrumb for us. And we learned all this amazing stuff. Yeah. And so, and from some of the best names in the business, I think yeah. the first course was taught by Tim Ferriss. Yes. And yeah, it was, it was crazy. Crazy. I have to just share that, you know, as you're describing this, I am getting the chills. <laughs> uh, the that's a good sign. That's a good sign. It is totally a good sign. And the divine breadcrumb describes it so perfectly, really. It describes so perfectly those signs that we receive. And I'd love to, to know a little bit more about the download that you received and, and how you tell the difference between receiving a download versus another thought. Because a lot of people they do receive these divine downloads, right? But they often mm. discount them as just being a fleeting thought, right? Exactly. And that's such a great question. And I, and I think that's something, even today, you know, I have to really check in with myself. Is this ego? Is this coming from the mind? Or is this something else? And I think in this case, because it was so just far removed from anything that I was thinking about, it wasn't even a question. And the other thing is, just like you were talking about getting chills, I, when I'm on the right track, I do get kind of this buzzy energy feeling up my arms and I was getting that. And I just knew, you know, okay, pay attention to this. This, this means something. Yeah. The other point that I want to make about that is oftentimes these divine breadcrumbs or divine thoughts come when you're not thinking about something that happens when, like Carol said, she was exercising or you're washing the dishes or you're taking a walk or you're in the shower because your, your mind is sort of occupied with the task at hand. And then these thoughts just kind of like flood in. I'm really glad that you brought that up. And it's such an important point because often when we are too focused around the thing that we want to manifest, right? It, it doesn't come. We're too much in our head and then our energy and our body becomes constricted. Mm -hmm. But what you were saying about, you know, that those downloads coming in when we're doing something else, when we're focused on something else in that point in time, I believe that that it, it helps us to be open, right? To receive. Yes, absolutely true. Yeah. This is awesome. Um, <laughs> I just love having both of you together. <laughs> so every experience in our lives shapes who we are, right? The, in, the insignificant moments and, and the bigger stuff. So for both of you, what do you feel has been one of the more pivotal moments that has put you where you are today right now? Oh I'll go goodness. first. Yeah, go first. <laughs> um, it seems like a very small thing, but it's made such a huge, huge impact on me. Um, a little bit of backstory. I had been working a series of different jobs and, and you know, sort of moving around a lot. Um, watching my mother work and be miserable made me realize that I did not want to repeat that. She was very well educated. She had her MBA and she would work jobs, you know, for the, for the paycheck and the vacation. And, and I knew I didn't want to do that, but I didn't know how to create anything else. So I was doing the job thing and I had landed this job that I thought was going to be this amazing job. I was on a VP track. I was going to be set for the rest of my career, you know, at 32 years old. And very quickly it turned into basically something almost abusive. And um, I went to a Bonnie Raitt concert and I was a huge fan of Bonnie Raitt for years. And one of my favorite songs of hers is Angel from Montgomery. And I have, at the time, I had heard it thousands of times. I had sung it. I knew that song backwards and forwards. And I'm sitting there listening with my eyes closed. And all of a sudden, this line in the song jumped out at me. And the line is, 
how the hell can a person go to work in the morning, come home in the evening and have nothing to say? And that's the life I was living. I would go to work, I would come home, I would drink, I would go to bed, I would get up and do it again. And I thought, this is not what I should be doing. And although I couldn't give my notice the next day, because I had to put some things in place, that's when I quit working formal jobs and became self-employed. Again, I just am having chills, chills, chills <laughs> <laughs> as, you're, as you're sharing that story. And it's so amazing how, you know, God in the universe speaks to us yep. through other people, through our intuition, through songs. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Your turn, Carol. <laughs> oh gosh, there's there's so many pivotal moments. Um, you know, and it's funny because up until a few days ago, I would have talked about the, you know, horrible, toxic, dysfunctional relationship I had with my ex-husband because that caused a, a lot of changes and craziness. And I had some really bad experiences in corporate as well. But recently uh, my daughter came home to surprise me for my birthday and I hadn't seen her in eight months. And, you know, we, we were talking about a lot of things in the past and it made me think that the birth of my daughter was probably one of the most pivotal moments for me. I mean, obviously to have a child who's healthy and all that, you know, you feel blessed and that's great. But I feel like she, I really do feel like our souls made a pact and she came into my life at a time when I needed a reason to keep going. And she brought this joy and motivation to me that I hadn't had in a long time. I, I was pretty much giving up. I was dealing with a lot of shame, a lot of self-loathing. And she was always there smiling. You know, she was the best baby. And I feel like if she hadn't been a good baby, I don't know what I would have done. That sounds so selfish, but I, I just couldn't handle any more with what was going on with her dad. You know, he was a, a drug addict. There was constant, you know, money being stolen. There was abuse, all, all these things. And she brought nothing but joy and peace to my life. And, and that went throughout, even after things ended with her dad, she was always, she's kind of the little mom. If she saw me getting stressed about anything, she was very much saying things like, you know, don't worry about it, mom. It's okay. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. And, and I feel bad saying that, that even, but that mm -hmm. was kind of the role she stepped into. And because of her and knowing I had to take care of her and make sure she had everything she needed, it just kept pushing me forward. And as she got older, she's pretty intuitive herself, more so than me, in fact. Um, as I started to kind of branch out and explore all the things that interested me, you know, in the metaphysical and angels and guides and energy healing, you know, she was right there with me, pushing me along and being my cheerleader. And I, I like I said, recently, I, in the last few days, I was just thinking about that, you know, would would I be where I am now without that dynamic? And I don't think I would be. Mm. So this is really unusual, but I have to share this with you. <laughs> okay. Before you mentioned your daughter and how she would kind of take a mom sort of role, I received a download as you were talking that you guys have had tons of past lives together and that she's been your mom. Oh, I totally believe that. In and that it's not life. the first, yeah, it's not the first time I've heard that. Thank you so much for sharing that because I believe that 100%. This is the first time this has ever happened while I've done an interview. <laughs> oh my gosh, I feel so honored. <laughs> <laughs> but I've learned <laughs> yeah. when, when things come up that they need to be shared. So absolutely. Absolutely. I am just loving this. So <laughs> there are a lot of people out there, right? And, and I know that, you know, uh, we do similar work, actually, in terms of helping people align with their higher path. And so a lot of people are at a crossroads in their life and feeling that fear of change. What advice could you guys give those people in terms of an action that they could take today that would help them to move forward? I'll jump in. 
I mean, I think it's really important that they, you know, get clear and whatever that means to them, if that's meditation, if that's, you know, spending time in nature. Um, and then from that, determining why they want to make a change in their life. They may not know what the change is that they want to make yet, but if they can determine why, that is going to be sort of the, the North Star to keep them motivated and focused. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. And, and I feel like if you're getting some type of calling, pay attention to mm -hmm. that, you know, do some discovery work. This calling is not coming from you. It's coming through you from source or God or whatever you want to call it. And whatever idea was given to you, it was given to you for a reason. So it doesn't mean that you have to immediately quit your job, but, you know, start following the clues you're getting and stay open and curious. You know, I think it's so easy to believe that what we see with our physical eyes is all there is, but there's just so much more and so much more help available to us. You know, we're just so supported in, in many ways and our experiences aren't linear. We may have to take steps back or pivot up or down, but just trust that it's all unfolding the way it's supposed to. Yep. Absolutely. And everything that's in the physical starts in the non-physical. Oh, true. Yes. So many of us are just conditioned to believe that we need to seek the tangible in order to achieve fulfillment, but it's really in the intangible. It is. And that's so hard to trust in the beginning. But I think is the more you use that, you know, quote unquote muscle, the easier it gets. Absolutely. And that's where I think faith comes into play too. Um, even people that say that they're faith-driven people, right? It's like everything is, is fine as long as it's smooth sailing. But as soon as the waters become a, a little stormy, which I've been here too, right? We have a tendency to kind of feel like we need to take care of everything ourselves, you know, and if we're not doing it, then it can't happen. It's so important for us to really lean into our faith in whatever higher power that is for, you know, whoever's listening to believe that the universe has our back and, and everything is really a process of co-creation. Mm-hmm. That actually used to be one of my mantras for a long time. The universe has my back. The universe has my back. <laughs> and, you know, you just say that enough. And I mean, you know, it's true anyway. So you just keep telling yourself that and you, you know, then you feel it. Yeah. Well, and that's exactly it, right? It, it's like you're unlearning. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think I was kind of laughing when you said that, Jennifer, about it, the, the fact that when things are going well, it's very easy to believe that the universe has your back and you feel like you're in the flow. But when you hit one of those, you know, speed bumps or some type of block, you know, and I know I've been guilty of this, where there's been times where I would just throw up my hands, oh, this doesn't work you know, and then I'm focusing, you know, I'm cutting myself off from source. Mm -hmm. Nobody's cutting me off. I'm doing it to myself. And then those are the times, you know, and now of course I become very aware of it, like instantaneously, like, okay, take a walk in nature or do something to make yourself feel better and raise your vibration. But back in the day when this was more new to me, I, I would get frustrated. You know, I'm doing this wrong. This isn't working. A and you just have to keep practicing and and like you said, Jennifer, just work on your faith and trust. Yeah, that's really what it is. It, it really is as simple as that. You know, we're the ones that tend to kind of get in our own way and make things more complicated. It's faith and mindset and just commitment and consistency. Mm -hmm. So on that note, you two have an amazing program that you've created that helps people that are in this place, right? In a space of transition. Um, we would love to hear more about that. Sure. Deb, do you want me to talk sure. about how it came about and then you yeah. can say what it is? Sure. Okay. So, so Deb and I always knew we wanted to find other ways to help and interact with our community. We just weren't 
sure what that was going to be. We tried a few things and didn't really resonate or things didn't work out. And since we started the Divine Breadcrumbs, so many people have asked us how we got started or they'd say, you know, this is really cool that you did this. Weren't you scared? And and, and they wanted to know how to go about starting over and, and build a new life. But many were really scared that they couldn't do it or they thought it was too late. So that was kind of, you know, the universe was tapping on us on the shoulder. You know, this is something you need to bring to the world. Yeah. So basically what it does, the program has 11 modules and the first half of it is doing the personal discovery work to sort of figure out, like I talked about your why, and then getting really clear and doing some exercises to figure out what it is that you really want your life to look like. And then once you've sort of gotten there and we can start setting some goals, we bring in our business experience to then help you take it from the idea to fruition, to just getting it off the ground, getting it out in the world and making it all happen. And the name of the course is Life Flip. And we call it that because we're using the analogy of flipping a house, right? You use the good bones and the foundation of the house, but you might need to tear down some walls or, you know, redo the kitchen or put in some new flooring to, to, to get it to be your dream home. Well, the same thing, you know, you, we really want people to get clear on what it is they want, and then we're just going to go for it. I really exactly. love that um, because when you say life flip and then you use the analogy of flipping a house, I think of our mind, body, and soul, right? I think mm. of our soul as the bones, mm -hmm. as the mm -hmm. foundation that it's eternal. Oh, I love that. Yes, yep. exactly. You know, and I think so many people are afraid that they have to start from ground zero and, and you don't. That's part of this too is you know, no, you, you come in with all kinds of personal and professional experiences and, and you don't have to build from scratch. Absolutely. We are empowered to decide how our path plays out. Um, but I, I do feel like a lot of people, this is where, you know, having someone like yourselves, right, or a coach for support can help so much because um, I feel like even when some of these people are making a transition, they tend to sell themselves short based upon what they think is or isn't possible when really where they need to focus their energy is just getting honest with what brings them the most joy and then following that and then trusting that everything else is going to fall into place. Absolutely. That's right. I love, love, love this. I love <laughs> that you guys created this program. I could just talk all day about how much I love you guys. <laughs> I know this is, I mean, cause well, same with us, this yeah, type of topic. This. Yeah. We can, we can talk about this all day long and we have, we've closed many a Dunkin' Donuts and, <laughs> You know, or whatever, <laughs> having these conversations. <laughs> I love Dunkin' Donuts. We don't have those out west, but I did enjoy them when I lived out east. <laughs> so how can someone find you if they want to learn more about both of you, the Divine Bread Prom, um, your new Life Flip program? Well, the, probably the first place to start is our website, the thedivinebreadcrumb.com, and that has all the information on the Divine Breadcrumb community and the podcast and Carol's amazing blog that she writes. Um, and then on that website, there's a services section and all the information about Life Flip is there and they can learn all about the course. And if they have questions, they can email us or get in touch with us. Um, all of the other contact outlets are listed on the website, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Very exciting. I would say to whoever is listening, if you are listening to this episode, it's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's a divine breadcrumb for somebody. And, and that's always our hope, whatever we're putting out, whether it's a, an episode of the podcast or a blog post or whatever it is that maybe it's touching somebody and giving them that little push to, to move towards their dreams. Absolutely. I want to thank both of you for joining me today and for your time and just for all that you're doing to uplift humanity. 
Oh, thank you so thank much. You. It's been such a pleasure. Yes. Love chatting with you. Thank you for listening to the Awake and On Purpose podcast. Please visit us and subscribe to the podcast at awakeandonpurpose.com so you never miss an episode. To learn more about how you can connect with your higher purpose and take that leap of faith to make your impact in the world, visit us at jenniferspoor.com. And while you're there, be sure to join our email list for exclusive offers and a weekly dose of inspiration. 